Welcome to the Hall of Fame podcast, and our sponsor is Fullbay, Fullbay Software. Whether you're running an independent shop that does tractor or trailer repair, or your in-house shop within your fleet, Fullbay Software will improve proficiency, productivity, and overall profitability for your shop. Please check out their software in our description wherever our podcast is consumed. And now, welcome to the Hall of Fame. to the Hall of Fame. Ken Miller brought to you by One Truck in America. That's OneTruck.us. Looking forward to today. We have Ultimo E-Mobility on. We have Mike Bushy, who is going to talk a little bit about what they have and what they actually do, which is uh, people that want to tran- uh, transition out into e- electric, hydrogen, fuel cell type type fleets. They, they can help you with that. And before I go any further, I'm going to let him introduce himself and talk a little bit about that. Then we're going to ask some questions. I even asked some questions that have popped up. I put out that that he was coming on, just some general questions. We'll ask him about those too. So, yeah. Mike, I'm going to turn it over to you and have you introduce yourself, and we'll go from there. Sure. Ken, thank you so much for having me, first of all. Big fan. Been watching a lot of your stuff. It's value-added, and I'm sure I'm sure um, the content's going to be great today because it's you and me, and who, it couldn't be any better. You know what I mean? So Very uh, easy, yes. Sure. Thanks for having me. My name is Mike Bucci. I'm the vice president of Alta E-Mobility. And what I like to tell everybody is when your boss comes to you and says, hey, we need to think about electric vehicles. Where do we start? Alta is where you start. Mm -hmm. We're the now what? So we specialize in only EVs and hydrogen powered EVs and electric EVs from class four all the way up to class eight. And we both on companion technology. So you could have a lithium powered class four step van. You're going to need a charger. You're going to need a network, probably somebody to figure out incentives for you. Um, and then you can bundle it into a lease. And the big thing after everything's been installed is how do you maintain it? And Alta maintains the vehicles and the charging systems in the fleet. So we're, we're the now what when your boss says, hey, figure out a position for or against you know, EVs, and we help people make the right business decision for their business, right? Um, In today's day and age now, uh, people are are converting to EVs because it's the right decision, not because they have to, but because it's the best decision for their business. And we're just here to provide information to help them figure out if it's right for their business. Okay, so let me just ask you a simple one. This is simple. So let's say um, I'm out Let's pick California. That seems to be a big EV state, and I and I have a yeah, hundred just a trucks. little, just a little. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I have a hundred trucks that I'm running today, and I come to you. Um, how do I go? What is my so? I come to you. I call you. Hey, I called your switchboard. Whatever. I get through to you, or probably someone in in, in in your sales department. I said, how do I even know what truck to buy? Do you guide me through that process? Walk me through that. Yeah, well, we'll just ask you a lot of questions. We call it a discovery Uh session. So what type of vehicles do you currently have? What's the GVW? What type of, um, do you domicile overnight? Do you're, you know, are you long haul trucking? Um, You know, what type of upfitters do you currently work with? So it's basically an exchange of information on how does your operation run? And then we will take a look at what vehicles in the market, you know, best support your operation. So it's, it's, you know, really a discovery session on your operation, what would be mm-hmm. successful for you guys and what are your internal KPIs, right? How are you measured? Is it uptime? Is it cost per mile? Um, what else are you trying to achieve? Yeah, no, no, that, that makes sense. So, so you're looking for so the guys say, okay, okay, I get it. So a guy comes in, hey, I'm local, I'm within 50 miles, I don't go that far. My weight yep. is not over 30, 40,000, let's say 30,000 pounds. So you're looking for all yep. that then you make a recommendation. Okay, so that's that. That's fairly simple. So without mentioning names, I don't want to mention anyone. Can you walk me through like the last fleet conversion? You don't have to mention the name of the company. I know some people don't want to mention. Just what yeah. is, so what does it entail? So the guy calls you on January, 2025. So how does that process works? And this is more for my fleet owners out there because I know right, right. I had a couple people have asked me some of these questions. So I figure I'd yeah. ask it to you and you can give it to them live. Well, you know what? Another, yeah, another good good thing about Alta is we're we're powertrain agnostic, so we can do both hydrogen and electric. 
But, okay. And we also are like fleet charging agnostic and refueling. So we can do behind the fence or if there's a depot buy, we can help broker a deal. So we take a complete agnostic approach to it. So uh, okay. a real life example um, in the Chicagoland area, we had a, a customer that had seven diesel tractors and they wanted to look to go EV and their, their lanes were uh, really short, um, which made it perfect for the BEV. So our initial discovery session was just like, how big was the fleet? What's your mileage? You know, when is your charge time? Do they charge overnight or do we need to charge during the day? Um, and after we had that discovery session, we kind of pencil in, we call it a pencil TCO. Does it make financial sense right out of the gate? Right. And our, cause yep. my customers need to say, okay, well, if we go this route, I need to come up with this type of investment and this type of payback. And he goes yeah. and he gets it. He does a sanity check with his with his boss, right? So once everybody's yep. on the same page with funding requirements, we do a facility audit. And in this location, they um, they needed to get a new transformer. So what we had to do was do a complete site assessment. How much power do they have? How fast could we get a transformer? We go from one part of the parking lot. We board underneath the actual parking lot and we stubbed it up on the end. So we actually came up with a refueling plan for behind the fence. And we actually did two locations too at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, that process of discovery to coming up with a final plan for refueling and then a total cost, that went from September to February and we provided a proposal in March, they kicked us off. And because we had chargers in stock already, and we had some friends that had transformers ready to go, we actually were able to install everything by the 22nd of May that year. So we were able to install wow. seven DC chargers in four months uh, because we were prepared for it. And uh, we gave them the keys and they've been happy ever since. So um, now granted, that was like basically nine months and they had power on site and we had pre-ordered chargers. So that was a uh, everything went right scenario. So it was, it was pretty cool. They're pretty happy. So did they, so did you also tell them what EV to buy or give them a recommendation or how did that? Yeah, we did. Um, okay. the, the one class eight tractor manufacturer we were at the time was uh, Nikola and we had an option to provide hydrogen or battery electric and battery electric meet, meet, meet their needs and uh, okay. we were able to get everything going. Okay. All right. So, all right, talk to me and let's, let's change this couple. You tell me, where do you see this industry going? I mean, there's two sides of this coin. There's your people that believe electric is the future, people that believe it's not. Let's forget about the naysayers. You tell me, where do you see this industry growing? And you may see it directly, but since you're representing these people, you may know. So where, how much yeah. growth do you see? I don't know, in the next five years from in EVs or hydrogen or some alternative fuel. Right, right. Well, I like to say uh, the topic of EV is very polarizing, right? And you're talking to everybody yeah. that's either pro or against. And once again, I'm, I'm just here to provide information. And what, what, we take a disarming approach, right? We're just like, hey, let's mm -hmm. give you some facts. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't. But we got to make sure it fits your bottom line. So, yep. um, you know, with with the political environment, um, probably mid last year, we decided to branch out into Southern California and really focus on the EV friendly states. So yep. right out of the gate for the next 12 to 18 months, you're, you're really going to see, um, you know, the Southern Californias, the Chicago lands, the Northeast they're going to keep deploying EVs and the subsidies will still be out there to help pay down some of the costs. And really that's, that's kind of where we're focused because it's, uh, it's acceptance is high culture is there. It's, it's the right fit. I, I should say Canada also is a big EV uh, market and we're getting ready to penetrate that through our forklift division. So um, we're bullish on it. And honestly, if anything, for me personally, the, the harder it is for companies to get into EV as far as dealers go, the better off I am because I'm already spun up and ready to go. So um, it, in a way, it keeps out some competition. So um, we're, we're bullish on it. It's going to be 
it's going to be slower, but we place the right bets in the right areas and we've got the right strategic partners to help execute. Well, you're also having, when you talk about Southern Cal, Chicago and the Northeast, that's where tons of American live. I would guarantee that's probably about 70% of the population if you just yeah. think about it, but yeah. population wise. So you got a great market there. So, okay. Um, we're, so as you can do, as you transition more and more, more and more companies, is there anything they should, anyone should think about? Okay. All right, let me phrase it differently. I decided I want to go, go down this road. What should I, what should I have in mind? So, even though you will tell me this when I call. So let's say I have a guy listening now. He's on the fence. He says, well, I don't know if I want to do this. Is it worth it? What would you want to tell that person? What would you tell that person? Because I know you're not telling him, hey, we're going to tell you right. if, if what you have is better or this will save you money or this would be more efficient or this would be better for your KPIs. So what would you tell that person, that 80, 50 truck guy in Chicago that sees this podcast? Hmm. That may be interesting, but he doesn't. Yeah. Know. He doesn't have a skin in the game. He doesn't have a political hedge one way or the other. Right, right. I, I think um, the biggest thing I'd say is your teammates around you are they progressive and what's your culture like? Do you like they like to try new things? Do they like to grow? Do they like to be on the forefront, or is it a, a different style of business where it's just like, hey, we're just going to do this regardless of what's going on in the economy? So. Um, my general thought is you have to have the right culture because you are changing the demeanor of everybody that works for you and with you. And they've got to be pot committed to help making this a success because things are going to break and things are going to go wrong. And culturally, you need to have a, a can do attitude where people are going to pick up their bootstraps and say, OK, well, this guy drives his EV just like he drives a uh, class A truck. He's got the heaviest foot in the market and he's got the lowest gas mileage and that's not going to change. Right. So um, yeah. the first thing I'd say is it's got to be a right cultural fit for your teammates, too. That's the biggest thing. Makes sense. OK, so we had Harbinger on. I know I was put your name. Um, two yeah, episodes, a couple great guy. Episodes yeah. Of, yeah. So tell me, how do you tie in? And I, I, I didn't call him to ask. I, I should have. But I, would, I think I just asked you. You're pretty straightforward. Tell me how do they tie into what you're doing? I got, I think I know how, but I'd rather you explain since most of the people would have watched that podcast before they watch yours. Yes. So if you really step back and you look at Alta Corporation, ALTG, we're a $2 billion company publicly traded, and we actually have 83 rooftops in North America. And our prime business is forklifts and construction equipment. Okay. Okay. And between our market, we cover about 35% of North America's population. And this doesn't include Southern California. So how does Alta fit into this? Uh, two ways. Okay. One, if you own a forklift, you're loading a truck. Okay. We have 35,000 customers in our database that have bought something from us in the last 18 months. So right out of the gate, I've got 200 sales folks nationwide that are always looking to bring innovative solutions to their customers. So right out of the gate, Alta has a built-in customer base, a built-in sales channel. Oh, by the way, we have 1,300 technicians and 900 service vans. And granted, they're not all EVs, but our culture is going to where the vehicles break down and once again, these are all tools. Like if your forklift goes down, it's got to get up and running. It, may, it, it, may, it makes per, it's make perfect sense. So what is it that's going on this year at Alta E-Mobility that you want us to know about? There's something you want to tell me about, something you want to get out to my guests, um, anything major? Um, this yeah. is your, your time to tell me a little bit about Alta. Well, uh, Alta E-Mobility has been in the EV space, you know, officially since 2021. I've been in the EV space since 2010. So I, I know everything wow. about chargers and hydrogen. And I've been on the dealer side, the customer side, and the, um, the, the tier one side. I think the big, biggest thing is um, coming up in August and September is the voucher programs are going to reopen in um in California, New York, New Jersey, 
Massachusetts. And if, if you're thinking about, you know, getting into EVs, um, the time is now to get into them because that, that funding dries up pretty fast. And I think it's very opportunistic play if you want to get into EVs, you know, better do it sooner than later because you never know what's going to change in the political environment and how things might, you know, get better or get worse or um, stay the same. So my biggest thing is just like, give us a call. We'll see if it works for you and let's time the market to make it as best business case decision for you guys as possible. Well, with that said, like I said, it'd be short and sweet. We're at, so we're at 16 minutes. So right. um, in closing, I always give an opportunity to, to say something at, at, at the end. So in closing, I want to thank you for, for coming on and give you the last word to say anything you'd like to say before I sign us out. So go ahead, sir. Listen, hey, I had a great time with you, Ken. Um, yeah, I hope to be back soon and uh, let's catch up some more. How's that sound? I don't need any more self-promotion or anything like that. Let's just do this again. This was fun. We will do it again, but I tell you, be short and sweet. Thank you so much for being on the Hall of Fame and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.